We are Casey and Savannah, and we've been best friends for 10 years. Give me a look at that. They're like a printed, you can see the mountains actually. Over the years, we have been on many adventures, including plenty of travel, hiking the John Muir Trail, starting multiple businesses, building out a camper van, and creating a little homestead in the city. You even may have seen one of our mini DIY stock tank pool videos. We recently bought five acres of raw land in the Upper Cumberland area of Tennessee and are embarking on our biggest adventure yet. Follow along as we build our off-grid homestead from the ground up. So this looks disheveled because you shouldn't move into your house before it's finished. But I had to drill holes into the studs um, so that we could run our electrical water because we're finally doing it because the other day it got hot. It wasn't even that hot. It was like 80 degrees outside, but it was like a thousand and four degrees out in here. And it was like, we got to do it. We got to get the drywall. Well, we got to get the insulation and drywall up or we are going to die. Like forget being cold. Cold has nothing on being hot because there's nothing, there's nothing we can do about it. So there's a fire, a literal fire under our booties to get it that taken care of. <laughs> So step one of, this isn't step one, but we've got to hang this on the wall to have any electricity flowing to the house. It's massive. It's as big as our house. You have to poke these holes out so that you can um, hang this on in between these two um, studs it like fits perfectly but if you attached it in the back it would just be going through the side of our house which we don't want so um <laughs> wouldn't be very strong no it would not and then there would be screws sticking out on the other side we can put it where we need it to go okay i gotta get the screws ready setback. You've never seen inside a breaker box. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. It has been a while since we've done a little catch up on kind of what's going on on our land and what we have accomplished. Um, a lot of stuff has been going on. It's been kind of a jumbled mess. Like we start doing this and then we have to do this and you know, when the weather starts warming up, everything seems very important. Um, so I figured let's just do a little catch up about what's been going on and maybe it'll sound a little more organized. <laughs> we most recently, um, built a new off-grid shower. That's a pretty cool video if you are looking for something uh, a way to have a shower. It's outdoors, um, but it is off-grid. If you are off-grid, it's a great cheap solution. Well, sort of. The water heater is actually not cheap, but uh, the actual shower building is cheap. So since then, you remember we cut some trees down in our backyard and well on our land and that's a whole thing. I've got a video about that and we're gonna get that wood milled. So the problem is that we've had trouble getting those logs all out of the woods because the people who cut them down had them fall into the woods because our house is on the other side. Um, so it was just like 
a little too sketchy to try to get it to go beside the house. So our neighbor came over and they helped us pull a lot of those logs out of the forest. So we are one step closer to getting that wood milled. The only thing is that we still have one more tree in another section of our land. And that tree is really deep in the woods. So the trees behind our house, it was not too difficult to get to them. We had to kind of hand cut down a lot of roots and little weedy things so that the tractor could get in there. But the other tree that's cut down is pretty far in there. So we're gonna have to do a lot of little like little tree cutting down so we haven't gotten around to that yet so we are so close to being ready to having the wood milled but we still have to get that one tree out first we've been spending a lot of time getting our gardens ready i'm finally putting our potatoes in the ground we've had them for a while and a few days ago i cut them and let them sit so that they could scab over and now i made this bed for them. I cut out this pathway, which I'm going to put wood chips in this pathway. And we already have onions here, lots of lettuces and root vegetables planted by seed up here. And this is going to be mostly a potato bed. There's a little space at the end with no potatoes, but there are 64 plants going in right here. And then this will also be a walkway, but not as, I'm going to widen it, but I'm not doing that right now. Johnny Rose. Because of the time of year, that has seemed really important because we definitely grew a lot of food last year. And since we are out here kind of pr pretty far from a store, we definitely want to grow more food and a lot of our food as much as we can. And that's always been the plan. We kind of had put the inside on hold, not like... We didn't say, we're not doing the inside, we got to work outside. But every day that it's nice outside, we think we need to be putting plants in the ground, seeds in the ground, making beds, making rows so that we can walk in them. So that's a lot of labor and we've been doing a lot of that. And we have a lot of plants that are ready to go into the ground. So that's something that we are always working on every day. I feel like one little task is done in the garden. So the past two weekends, we actually took two separate small trips. One of them was like a kind of PR trip for Hay Wanderer. And the other one was just like a relaxing three-day, three-night little trip. It was a very nice little trip. And we were able to just kind of rest, be in temperature control, and also just not think about many things on the land or for work or anything like that. We just kind of hung out and did some fun things when we came home from our trip our bell tent had collapsed Don't be envious of my very good hand stitching skills. We'll get that, just get that really good line up. Alright, just let me get this out of here. Alright, so we're just both gonna grab this. You're gonna push up to the literal sky. Okay. While I try to push this back. Okay, we fixed it. Yay. And we actually knew about that. Our neighbor texted us while we were on a trip and said, your tent is collapsed. That was a crisis averted. 
And as soon as we got back from the land, we went to get something special. So we've talked about many times how we aren't going to be getting any new animals until like at least our house and bathroom were done. Um, but what are we doing right now? Getting some animals. <laughs> yes. So we're driving two hours actually away from the land to get these said animals. selling them so we they're eggs for us so it's just and we like give them away when we have extra so it's just like a delightful little addition and it's really not any it, like they the, sometimes the chicks cost a little more money than if I just bought like a basic chicken like a basic <laughs> chick to lay eggs but in the grand scheme of things they all cost the same amount to feed and sometimes you can get an, a chick a chicken that will lay like more eggs per year than say a I don't know olive egger I don't know because olive egger is she gets pretty a lot but we are just there we just do eggs for us we're not selling them so that is one color that is missing from our flock and we just had this opportunity came up to get them and the thing is is that our olive egger that we have Phoebe she is broody and we were like okay we'll just hopefully Phoebe would ex we could like sneak them under her and hopefully she would accept that those are her babies we did not consider this one problem and that is that um, a week ago is when Casey saw that these were available and she was like I want we were like let's do it and the thing is we were going out of town and she was uh, willing to hold them for us so now the chicks are almost a week old and really they're getting bigger you can tell they're not like the brand new chicks and so it's very likely now that Phoebe really actually does, will not care about them which is the whole reason that we were even getting them because we were like we won't have to worry about keeping them warm all the time and away from the dogs inside and all that stuff if Phoebe would accept them but I don't know that that's really going to be an option anymore we're going to try it but it's likely that we will be taking care of them All right, so we've moved all the eggs out from Phoebe and snuck in the chicks. She does not seem offended. She did at one point. At one point she seemed offended by one of the chicks, but seems okay right now. We're gonna build something so that the chicks and Phoebe can actually have water and food up there where they are and build a little ladder up to that platform um, but right now we're just kind of waiting we kind of keep going back and checking to make sure that everything's okay but everything seems fine so I think we're gonna go ahead and get that little thing built for them 
if you didn't already know this, we have officially moved out of the camper and our friends came and got it while we were out of town this weekend. So it is not on the land anymore, but I had built the shelf in there and it housed, it just made more like kitchen space for us. And so I took that out and miraculously enough, Are y'all partying? So after picking up the chicks, it was very nice weather, so we figured we could actually do some work inside the shed. The problem is that it is really warm outside, so because we don't have insulation or anything going on in the house, it's really warm inside the house. So if it gets up to like 80, we in the middle of the day, you just can't be inside the house. And even when you wake up, and it's in you know the mid 70s it's already getting hot inside the house that has made us be kind of in a little panic about we really got to get our insulation in and as we've talked about in 7,000 million videos and such we it's not just about putting insulation up you've got to do the wiring first and when we got back from our trip we said okay why don't we start working on the ceiling because the ceiling is actually pretty easy the ceiling is just there are lights in some places. And the first thing we needed to do was put the baffles up. So we started doing that. Next. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm about to start wiring these lights up here. Um, this is—they're not up yet, but they're. There's no it. lights, yeah. So this is um, wire for DC, so it's like marine grade wire. Um, you would not have this in a regular house, but we're doing this because we are going to be running on solar. So the lights are like such a low amount of watts if you can use DC. Um, and so I just have four lights up there. That's going to be an attic eventually. Yes. And we need to get the insulation on our roof because it's going to be hot, like really hot this week. So, well, we need to get insulation everywhere, but this is the start. Um, in order to get that insulation up, we've got to wire those lights. So we're going to do that. There's going to be a, um, DC fuse box right here next to the breaker box. Okay. Just trust her. Okay. Just trust me. Casey already cut the holes. Is that in the sky? And we have a great angle over here. So basically I'm going to be pulling this wire. I'm just using these boxes for safety. So like the connections will sit in here, but the lights are actually will sit on the ceiling. Like you cut a hole in the ceiling and they have like a spring lock. I'll show you them. But this is what they're gonna do. Just to keep the shavings off of my messy bed down here. There we go. The baffles is what creates an airspace under Neath the roof putting the baffles up would take like five seconds if we didn't live in here so while so what we have to do is kind of move stuff around every time you want to move the ladder which is not fun at all we decided that we could kind of do batch insulation so the section that i did the first day we thought maybe if we put insulation up that will at least help this one section stay a little less hot so we thought, what if we just did everything in this one section first and then move because that's just, you know, only having to move your stuff one time. So we got one thing of insulation up, one literal strip. Casey was kind of cutting the insulation outside and I was going to be putting it on up here. And then after I put that one strip up, I was like, oh, I we're going to have to do this together because it's just kind of awkward. 
and we were talking about the outside and she was having trouble cutting the insulation so I was going to go try to cut the insulation and I went and stepped off of our porch and I rolled and cracked my ankle. It was really painful. Um, our little porch is just like I think maybe one or two inches too high and we've we've thought that all the time but we didn't we've never you know done anything about it now we will um but yeah so i have a sprained ankle now and we were not able to do any more insulation my ankle is really swollen i will spare you those details um, in case that <laughs> grosses anyone out but yes my ankle is was like last night like this big ball and it is still I just can't walk around very much so climbing up a ladder is not an option so that's kind of a bummer because uh, now we are just kind of trying to figure out how we're going to do things with my ankle not working or my foot you know I can't really walk Casey's actually in town right now and she's gonna get me some crutches and something to wrap my ankle with so I'm hoping that I'll be able to move around and still accomplish things but right now I'm literally just glued to the couch and yeah we have that one lone piece of insulation up and we really need to get the insulation up there and um yeah I don't see that happening anytime soon so right now everything's kind of on hold and we are considering just ordering our mini split now um so we're get we are going to get a mini split it's going to be run off of solar um but that's just going to be a whole the solar is going to be a whole thing and so is kind of wiring everything like the mini split but we did think about going ahead and getting the mini split and at least um just being able to run that even without out insulation to combat the very warm temperatures especially when we're going to be when it gets warmer and we are trying to put insulation up and it's really hot I think that having the mini split will be just helpful you know we heated this shed with our wood stove without insulation in the winter not because we are like oh we don't need insulation but just because that's the situation we are in and so we're kind of thinking about doing that same thing with the air conditioner and it would be run off of the generator we would love for you to come back next week and see what we end up accomplishing with one of us being um, not as mobile as usual. And if you live in the Upper Cumberland area, specifically Overton County, and you want to do some shed work, um, you know, help turn this shed into a house, you can email us. I'm serious. We haven't really talked a lot about this. But we definitely want this to be a place where people can come and uh, learn how to do kind of the things that we are doing. And obviously we aren't experts at anything that we are doing. But I think that we're just really open to having people who, who want to turn a shed into a house come see how you do X, Y, Z. Um, and if you live near us and are interested in that, we certainly would love to have you come and help us do something and have a hands-on experience and if you don't live near us just stay tuned because one day we will get this shed done and we will have plenty of information about how it went down and um th that might be helpful to you thanks so much for watching this video as we kind of catch up with what we're doing on the land if you like to give it a thumbs up uh, we'd love if you would leave a comment we love have a little conversation in the comments about um what's going on in the video and if you have any questions that's where we can answer them we will see you next week i believe our first strawberry is ready in the green stock these ones not so much Um, we ate the strawberry, I forgot to record. It was delicious. It was so good. It was really sweet, yeah. Yeah. Just one though.